Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. Hello to everyone in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral community and all of our friends. This is Father Jonathan. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to continue our series on the lives of the saints. And on this, the 9th of May, we celebrate the memory of the holy and great martyr Christopher with Kalinika, Aquilina, and the 200 soldiers who came to believe in Christ through him. In the fourth year of the reign of Decius, soldiers arrived in an eastern town and put all the Christians they found there to torture. A gigantic and very ugly young mercenary called Reprobus from a barbaric tribe was seized with compassion at the sight. Unable, however, to communicate with the Christians in their language, he fell to his knees and transformed by the innate upsurge of nature, made a prayer to God. An angel then appeared to him, and touching his lips, gave him the power of understanding the language of the Romans. Filled with boldness by his heavenly vision, Reprobus returned to the town and covered the persecutors with reproach, confessing his faith in Christ. A certain Bacchus threw himself on him to punch him in the face. The giant let him, replied gently, It is through obedience to Christ's commandments that I endure these blows. If I were to give free rein to my anger, the whole of your corrupt empire would be unable to resist me. The emperor, having been advised of the situation, sent a squad of 200 soldiers to arrest the rebellious man. After a thorough search, they found him at the moment when, praying in front of a church and having planted his staff in the earth, the stick had immediately burst into leaf. The saint asked them to give him a little more time to receive holy baptism, and in order to prove the favor he had received from God, he multiplied the soldiers' provisions, they they coming at once to faith in Christ. Then they went together to Antioch, where they were baptized by St. Babylus, Reprobus receiving the name Christopher, that is Christ-bearer. When the saint was summoned before the emperor, the latter, terrified by his terrible and repulsive appearance, fell over backwards. Then, having regained control over himself, he tried to make him renounce his faith. Not daring to provoke the giant with threats, He had two prostitutes, Kalinika and Aquila, sent to him with orders to employ their charm to draw Christopher into fornication and thence to idol worship. But the opposite happened. Christopher converted the two women, showing them that nothing on earth could compare with eternal life. They confessed their sins and the saint interceded before them, before God. The next day they came before the emperor and confessed their faith. Theseus, in fury, had them hanged by their hair with heavy stones and tried tied to cut their tied to their feet. Aquilina expired under the torture on the first of April. On the following day, Kalinika made as though she submitted and asked to be taken to the idol temple. After having been shown the statue of Zeus, she tried to girdle girdle to it and exerting all her strength, pulled it down. She then did the same with the statues of Hercules and Apollo. Seized immediately by the pagans, she was spitted from her feet to her shoulders, and she gave her soul into God's hands, confiding herself to St. Christopher's prayers. Five days later, Turning his wrath on the soldiers who had been converted by St. Christopher, the tyrant had them beheaded and ordered that their bodies be burned outside the town. They remained, however, intact, and the Christians gave them an honorable burial. Theseus then had the saint shut in a bronze vessel, pierced with four holes, and placed on a brazier. But Christopher did not feel the burning, And at the sight of this, more than a thousand pagans who were there cried out, Great is the God of the Christians. They then fell at the martyr's feet, saying, You are rightly called Christopher, because you truly carried Christ in your heart, and thus count for nothing the torments of tyrants. 
The saint from within the furnace taught them the principles of Christian faith and revealed to them that he was contemplating in a vision a great and majestic personage more resplendent than the sun with a crown on his head and surrounded by myriads of soldiers with faces of flames who crushed the black hordes of demons hurling themselves against them learning thus of Christ's victory over the evil ones undertaking the newly converted Christians delivered the saint but the next day the emperor fearing riot took the opportunity on a pagan festival to execute all who had declared themselves to be Christians and disciples of St. Christopher. He then ordered that St. Christopher be chained to a heavy mill wheel and cast into a pit, whence he was delivered by an angel. They then put red hot bonds curious on him, but the valorous martyr remained impassable under the pain. Finally, having exhausted the resources of his perverse imagination, the tyrant beheaded him on the 9th of May. Shortly afterward, the bishop of Attila brought the martyr's body and solemnly translated it to the city where St. Christopher became its protector against intemperance and calamity. His veneration spread very widely during the Middle Ages, both in the East and the West. By the prayers of the holy great martyr, Christopher and those with him. May the Lord God have mercy on us and save us. Amen. God bless you. We're here for you. We love you dearly. Don't hesitate to reach out. Call us, email us, leave us a message on social media. Leave us a note in the comment section. If you'd like to support this ministry, remember to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on social media. Again, Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. God bless you and have a beautiful rest of your day.